this is your actress designer uh, so this is your canvas right uh, so to more no more about the tool and the different uh, options uh, altrix can do uh, how about the configuration different kinds of workflows uh, overall about the tool itself i dropped another video as well in the youtube you can watch that and that's going to give you like overall high level view of what altrix can do and uh, little bit of uh, you know etls as well so we can take a look into that video uh, so like right now let's just focus into the linear regression uh, so what the first steps first is basically to drag in the input data to here uh, and then let's configure the input data so let's click on that uh, configure option and then it's going to have different data sources right so sql server sharepoint uh, cassandra redshift uh, different uh, mostly all the databases right and then right, right now my data is basically li living in a csv file so i'm just gonna uh, from this list of options i'm just gonna choose csv and then i'm just gonna select my csv file so this boston housing file is a, should be popular for you because in my previous video i have we have used boston housing to do regression using r right so it's the same file um so uh, while this file is loading uh, uh what this file does is basically I can show you quickly. Um, this is what the definition of the Boston housing file is. If you see here, it has 14 variables. All these 14 variables are talking about the uh, different housing prices in the Boston area, Boston city. Uh, so there is different variables here, the crime rate, uh, nitrous oxide concentration, average number of rooms per dwelling, age, uh, distances to the employment centers, L stat, low status of the population, median value of owner occupied homes, and all right. There is a bunch of 14 different variables that illustrates how the uh, value of the houses in Boston area are basically computed, right? So that's what it is. Um, sorry, for, for our analysis, what we're going to use is basically the median value of uh, owner occupied houses. That's going to be our output variable or our target variable, right? You can call it either way. Uh, the lowest status of population L stat, that's going to be our input variable or our predictor variable. You know, again, either way you can call it. So, uh, so this is our output variable. This is our input variable, right? So it's the same same thing here. We just need we just imported the data from the previous step here. Um, so this is basically a sample of this data. Uh, so next thing, what I need to do is I need to go to the predictive tab. And uh, since we're going to do the linear regression, we need to choose linear regression from this list here. There's a bunch of tools here. There is uh, Forest Miranda Forest, Decision Tree, Neural Nets, uh, NB Classifier, Logistic Regression, SVMs. There's a bunch of different models it can do. But today's focus is basically linear regression. Let's drag and drop this out here. And then let's make a connection. Right. Once you make the connection, it's gonna uh, let's configure this linear regression. So click on this tool, and then on the left hand side, it's gonna show the configuration for this tool. Right. So, so if you see here, it's a name name of the model. Let's call it like uh, you know again the boring most boring name, right? My model. <laughs> so um, that's gonna be the name of the uh, model here. And then and I go to the target variable. If you see here, I, there isn't any options for me to pick from the target variable, right? The reason for that is straightforward. Uh, linear regression is basically a continuous uh, output. It's expecting continuous output if you think about it, right? So uh, you need to supply a continuous variable. So the input that you pass here is a CSV file, right? So the Altrix is reading it as a text file. Uh, each and every uh, variable here, it is reading it as a text, right? So this tool here, it is not able to re read any of those uh, variables in, from the input because everything is like shown as text, where is my uh, continuous numerical input, right? So that's why it is not giving, giving me any options. But here I can choose any, uh, I can choose something. I can choose one of these for my uh, predictor variables, but it's not going to work for me. It's going to throw an error when I run it, it's going to throw an error. So what I'm going to do is I need to cast the variable, I need to change the type of the variable. So I can do that easily by using the select tool. So I just need to just drag and drag and drop it in the between and it will automatically make the plumbing right accordingly. All right. So if you see here, uh, I can choose different variables here. So if you see here, as we already discussed, everything is a string or a text, right? So uh, right now, 
all that matters for me is uh, my last these two variables so i'm just going to convert these two variables into an integer in 32 in 32 right and then uh, what i can also do is let's do a multiple regression right so since it's super easy to configure let us just use age also as another uh, predictor variable so these are the three variables i'm going to use in my model i can you know what i can actually change all the variables into an integer but you know just being lazy let's just take age lstat and medv and just convert them into integer and then uh, when i click on the linear regression tool uh, now this can uh, recognize all these three variables in my output uh, or my uh, target variable which I, all right so this is what we have here in our target variable if i select on it here it's gonna show the drop down okay now it has all the three variables right it can have all the variables provided you have converted all the variables in your uh, previous step but in this step we, we, we i was just being lazy so i just created converted only three variables into a numerical so sorry for that <laughs> so um so in this one i'm as we discussed so medv the median home prices in boston is going to be my output variable right and then i'm going to use um the l stat the lower status of the population and the age right as my uh, input variables or my predicted variables right so once that is done the tool is configured now i need to see what kind of results these three variables are these two variables are uh, you know outputting on to my uh, medv right so how do i check that right click onto this tool and uh, add browse tool to it so i'm just gonna show you guys what this tool is basically so add all browsers uh, so there's three different outputs you can see one is your uh, output one is your uh, report one is your i which is your interactive o r i right so i'm adding our you know i'm adding browse tool to all the three but i'm the the actual report is based the actual important piece that you need to see is your, your r right so i'm just gonna hit run it's gonna uh, run the model right now if you can see it's gonna be a little bit uh the, there's gonna be a little bit of a delay uh than you're running the same multiple regression model using your r or python because uh Altrix is basically uh, it is just a front end tool, right? It is in turn using R in the back end to get you the results uh, for your linear regression, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. What is the reason for that delay? Um, it's especially annoying uh, if you use like huge data sets. This data set is super small, just 500 lines of data. But if you have like a million or 100,000 records or you know huge data sets, mm -hmm. this is going to take forever. All right, so it just shows like uh, it doesn't basically have any kind of uh, you know objective information here. It just profiles the whole output as a, as one shot, which is not very critical for you. But what's critical is the R, right? The R and the I, which we'll go through that. So R is basically it's you could, it's it might be very familiar to you if you have you've seen the regression results in R. Uh, in my previous video, I would have uh, shown you guys exactly. How the regression results in R is gonna look like, and this is just the uh, same thing, right? As I mentioned, it's gonna execute, it's gonna capture all the input and output variables, it's gonna do the execution in the R, and it's gonna bring back the results to you, right? That's exactly what it's gonna do. So if you see here uh, in this one, let's take a quick moment to review this model. Uh, so this is the function call as we discussed. So you uh, you have your output variable, and these two are your input variables. Uh, so this shows the residuals, the, uh, your uh, your target variable minus the predicted uh, target variable, that's uh, residual. So this is the distribution of your residual, right? So what is the min, what is the max, what is the median, first, third quartiles, and all this is all everything is here. And it's, it's really does a good job in getting things in like, uh, you know, all in one place. That's That that should go to the, that credit should go to Alfix, actually. Um, then you have your coefficients here. So you have your intercept, the y-intercept 32.28. You have your slope for a 0 0.03 and your negative slope looks like there's negative slope for your L-stat. Uh, and then you have your standard errors, right? For each and every of these. And then comes your t-value. So what is this t-value, right? So it is basically a division of your estimate versus divided by your standard error. That is basically your t-value, right? So you can make a division of these two 
it's going to give you the same, same results right so estimate divided by standard error gives you t value that's a t test right so what this means is basically how much of what this t test means is how much of effect does the standard error have on my estimates right so this is basically an estimate this is not the this might not be like 100% accurate there's going to be an error value right it's going to be prediction it's always going to have an like an error uh, parameter right but how much of an impact is that error parameter having on my estimate right that's what t value talks about and the p value which is basically probability test on my t value that talks about the same thing as well so i wanted to always have my error as low right so this talks that i always wanted to have like uh, lowest p value right which means that my uh, estimate is high right uh, the numerator is high uh, than my denominator which is a good thing so uh, the modulus of t is always like uh, uh, i always wanted to make sure modulus of t is high so in this one the prob what is the probability of having a lower modulus of t which means a lower value of my you know my t value which is my which means a higher value of my standard error right so i always wanted to have this probability as low as possible right so that my standard errors uh, effect on my estimate is always kept low hope that makes sense let me know if if, if you have uh, uh, any questions um in the comments right so uh, so you have your uh, uh, you have your significant codes as well plotted out here you have your l stat looks like it's a very good uh, it has a very good uh, uh, um, estimate value close to the uh, actual value um, which means less error uh, from for, for the for your estimate uh, likewise uh, um, you have your p value looks healthy uh, you have your residual standard error which is like 6.1922 uh there is uh, 503 degrees of freedom which is basically your total number of records which is 506 right so you have 506 uh, number of records in this data set so n minus that's your n is your 506 minus k is your uh, number of uh, variables that you have so this there's two variables so 504 so n minus k minus 1 is what you have here right um and then you have your multiple r square so which is 0.5529 which looks like you know halfway uh, so this value ranges from uh, 0 to 1 so right right now it is 0.5 which is like like halfway through it it's like little bit better but it could be it could do better as well but in the given data this is what we have this is the most best correlation we have i have before creating this video already went through all the different variables so this these two are the good variables we have So if you guys can try it out other variables also and if you find something else interesting let me know but i don't think so like with this given data set i think these two are the variables that have a highest correlation uh and then you have your adjusted r square and since it's a multiple regression i need to look into my adjusted r square so 0.5511 again it's a good one as well and then you have your f test right so f test is again another test that talks about the um, the effect the uh, my residual error has on my uh, my uh, my regression values right so my uh, sum of squares of regression divided by sum of squares of my error uh, so that is like 311 on uh, this is my this is my k value this is my uh, degrees of freedom right and then the p value computed from my f static value so that is my that is 2.2 exponential minus 16 which is like super low right so if you see here the in the analysis of variance so it's going to show uh, how much of a significance do we have for the probability testing on my f value so that still looks uh, healthy right so i would choose this model so i have a healthy p value healthy r square value and then i also have a healthy uh, probability of healthy f test values right so i think this model uh, looks good the only thing of concern is basically my residuals right for that let's quickly go into our uh, residual plots so you see here ah uh, there there comes a the problem here you see here in the residuals you can see there is four different plots first plot is residuals as is fitted these are your residuals as the residual values uh, plotted against your uh, the predicted values right so what this uh, shows is basically there is a nonlinear relationship see here there is non linear relationship which is not a healthy sign right so uh, what this means is basically um, the residual values basically the errors uh, is also increasing 
whenever your predicted value or your uh, your output variable value is increasing it's not a healthy thing let's say for example uh, on your first record your output variable is 5 and your residual value is let's say 10 the second record your uh, your output variable may be like 20 and your residual value may be 100 right so this is called as a uh, non homoscedastic so you always wanted to have like your uh, output values uh, homoscedastic right so that's called homoscedasticity so right now uh, this is not homoscedastic so it is like a big uh, it's uh, alarm for me so there's a lot of the uh, residuals are causing a lot of problems so i need to check on my data or i need to clean some data or i need to uh, look into my outliers which we'll see in a few seconds um you see here a cook's distance so on the red line whatever is falling beyond this red line is basically your uh, outliers so there is lot of outliers in this data that is causing lot of the turbulence so that's what i found here you see these uh, outliers are causing lot of turbulence um and then you have your you see the normality is also not there so this is a qq plot quantile quantile plot you have a standard residuals in your theoretical quantiles so this this curve here they should fall right on to this uh, linear line which in this case is not so that's the problem here so um the main three principles of linear regression is basically or uh, being homoscedastic being uh, 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 normal the residuals being normal and then uh, input and output variable should have a high correlation uh, so these basically are your uh, important principles for your uh, linear regression in this one we have a good uh p value good r square value uh, right however uh, the residuals are a problem here so i need to look on to my residuals in yes. our uh, report there is another view called uh, i which is your interactive view so that's basically going to show all the metrics in like different lines uh we have your uh, all your metrics here and we have metrics here so that's basically what the tool itself now uh, let's go a little bit in further it's not uh, this piece what we going to see is not necessary but let's take a deep dive into the tool itself let's see how they have created the tool so right click on this tool and go to open macro i'll show you exactly why this uh, uh, this reason why you know it's getting that much of a uh, performance lag just for the user uh, interface perspective uh, for the anova uh, for building the regression charts uh, right so the main thing that it is using is here that the r engine right so this is basically your r engine whatever you see in the developer here the developer tab on the top this guy right it's same thing that they use the r engine here so if i click on to that there is a lot of coding of there is a lot of r coding they have did it in the back end right uh, instead of we doing all this they have did all this coding for us uh, just to make sure uh, uh, the user the user in the user experiences like uh, easier than just you know uh, coding in r so using altrix tool you don't need to have any kind of uh, uh, programming knowledge at all right so uh, yeah so this is using an interactive app uh, flow so that's why you can see all this you know, uh, like a action kind of symbol on top of each and every icon here so yeah so this is basically heart of this whole program so i just want to show you guys how they have built this teach and every tool so that is the reason how it is just you know one tool it is just drag and drop and you can just configure and go and get your results and then you can drive the project without any other uh, you know lag of programming uh, so that the, uh, all these programming bottleneck is been handled within altrix itself right so that's the uh, credit that we have to give to altrix and they did a really great job at that right so uh, that's about what we have for linear regression thank you guys hi guys i so hope you like the video if you have any questions or comments please let me know uh, until i see you guys